Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. The American League Championship Series is underway. Game one happened. Rays, Astros, let's talk all about it. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Thank you very much for joining us. If you're new, if you're old, if you're in between, appreciate you. Coming to you live from the Roosevelt Studios in the Bronx. My name's Jimmy. I got Jake sitting right next to me. He's wearing a Roosevelt shirt, our favorite Roosevelt Mm -hmm. shirt. Got Trev in California and Bug Bug Dude behind the dish. Only one game to recap today, so it's probably going to be a quicker episode than normal. It's the American League Championship Series. Game number one, Rays versus the Astros out in San Diego. Snell versus Framber. But first, Trev, how are you doing? As I expressed to you guys earlier, I had an all-time sports night. It'll never, ever happen again in the history of my life, if that makes any sense. Lakers win. My Seahawks come back in crazy fashion to win the game. And then the Rays raised all over the Astros. It was an excellent night. Doesn't happen like that all the time. And specifically, all three of those having the same time, never going to happen again. So I enjoyed uh, this particular evening in 2020. Congrats to you. Was Arch happy for you? He was. He left before the game started, but we had a good we had a good little day yesterday. A nice little uh, afternoon hangout sesh. Okay. Jake, he did ask about you guys. He said, "How are those two little idiots doing after the Yankees?" What did he say? Lost. Oh, I mean, I said that. I I made that part up. <laughs> you he did ask how you guys up. were doing. You said they're two little idiots and said, they're I struggling with the so Yankees. Much, but I also love them. Did you ask him where he's going in free agency? Well, he has a team option, so he has to wait to see if the Pirates will pick Ooh. that up. Which is... Well, how much is it not. for? Why would they pick it up? They're like in a total rebuild. It's an asset. If it's the Yeah, right if they price. want to take him and try to trade him, if they think he mm, can be yeah. worth something, you know. What's okay. the number? I don't remember the number. It's it's decent. It's not crazy. I think what it's around 10. What did he make uh, before taxes this year? Uh, you could look it up. We could look it up. That's the <laughs> crazy. I think, it's, I think the option's for like 10. Did you so tell I, him that you're like yeah, a hot competitor of the Big Jays and that you want to break his news now? When it comes down, I will, I will have that news. Wow, all you Let's Chris Archer up. fans! I'm sure it says here. I'll look it up right now. It's eleven. Eleven million. He he told me yesterday he's doesn't he's lean. They they probably won't, but. That's my uned- un- uneducated guess. The trade avenue is, he, is there, but... He'd have I, to be pretty good in the first half next year to make that worthwhile, and that's kind of a coin flip at this point. I think point in any other year, yes, he, they pick that up. Because $11 million for a starting pitcher, like, I know it sounds like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but for a starting pitcher, it's not. Not for a solid one. Well, so, patron in the chat, Harry Gonzalez, says that your sequence episode with Archer bang. was so dope. Bang. Oh, thank you. So He's shout good. out. He's really good. Shout out Sequence, Trev's show, and shout out the patrons. Bad. And here are the most newest patrons. Coach Ballgame joined mm. the crew. What up, Coach? The milk coach. master himself. Scrawny Donnie. Tough nickname. He joined. Joe Puckett. Les Gores. Les, that's a tough last name. Gores. Jared Luth. Solana Sanchez, Thomas Finney, and Detroit Dabber, 313. Oh, he's Detroit Dabber's a big part of the morning crew. Active. Active. Thank you guys very much. Those are our most recent patrons. They can watch live, be part of the show, a little pre-game action sometimes, accidentally, or I don't know if that's really – well, and post-game action as well. Um, so thanks to the, the patrons. It's $2 a month, helps us out, supports us. Patreon.com slash John Boy Media. We have a treat for anyone that listens to Talking Yanks. You know what's about to happen. For anyone that listens to Talking Baseball last playoffs, you know what's about to happen. Trev, I don't think you know what's about to happen, but young Jakey here is about to burn the game. There were too many games starting in the beginning of the postseason, and now we're down to maybe one or two a night. We get special treats. So 
For anyone that didn't watch the game, Jake's going to let you know what happened. For anyone that did, he's going to remind you what happened because you forgot some things. So is everyone ready? Hope so. Yes. All right. Here we go. On your mark. Get set. Burn, Jakey Burn. Game one of the American League Championship Series. The Rays can almost snell the World Series as Blake takes the bump for Tampa versus Framber Alert. The Houston Astros and Framber Valdez try not to go missing from this year's Fall Classic. Top one. Here I come to save the day. Mighty Mouse Jose Altuve goes deep fly. It's one nothing. Houston. Top four, I'll take you to the Randy shop. Hey, Rosarena. Oh, the Cuban Mookie bet solo shot ties the game at one. Snell didn't have his A stuff, but battled through five innings. One earned run, only two punchies. Meanwhile, Framber looked strong, but made one more mistake to Zanino. The Pinna, the Santa Maria. RBI single all the way to left field. Six innings pitched, two earned runs, eight Ks, four walks from Valdez. The Rays deploy their B bullpen, but it looks like an A plan by Cash. Snell to Curtis to Thompson to Loop to Castillo. No Paredes for Houston, even though Anoli did his job. Rays take game one, two, one final. No parade for Houston. Is what that was the, that? Is that the word play there? Paredes. But Anoli did Anoli. his job. Yeah. Great job. I thought it was good. Jake does. It's a good way to get through the game. To 2018, 2019, Jake did 162 of those both seasons every single Yankee game. It's, it's very. A couple cop out losses, but yeah. That's pretty I liked impressive. it. I liked it. I thought it was good. The Randy was shit was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mighty Mouse. Good job, Jake. So, uh, yeah. Trev, you got a lot of skin in this game. You're oh a Rays my fan. God. Yeah. What you. You. you Juice. So, obviously, Jake and I have a ton of bias coming off the Yankees games where our hearts were fully on the line and every pitch mattered. Uh, but that game, to me, for for being so, so close, I never felt incredible intenseness. And I think it's because whenever that bubble was getting built, a double play just popped it right away. And it was like, oh, oh that's over. Um, but the Rays, this is a really good win for the Rays. They didn't use Anderson. They didn't use Fairbanks. Snell, I think, is the worst of their three starting pitchers, and they come away with a win. And Snell did not look great. He only had one strikeout, two strikeouts? Two strikeouts, which uh, would have been his low on the season. So I I think what part of what you're saying is, I, I mean, Snell didn't have his best stuff, and I think that's pretty obvious. Um and I, I think there is some credit to him. You know, he did get a couple timely double plays, but to get through five innings, one earned run, uh, only getting two strikeouts when, you know, you're Blake Snell, you're a guy that's had nine, eight Ks in a lot of games this season. There's something to that. Yeah. Trev, we were shocked they sent Snell back out for the fifth. Can you hear us? I got you, yeah. When they sent him back out to face the top the third time, because I thought he looked pretty beat up or not sharp. But I think that's that's the no off days coming to effect. Like we need five from you, Snell. A hundred percent. That's exactly what it was. And you guys give Snell zero credit. Look Just what gave him credit. Look what he's done in the playoffs. He's got two eight seven in the playoffs. Five innings yesterday. Yes, yeah, six hits, only two strikeouts, but he got the job done. The the results are there. But you have to admit he didn't look like on his A game last night. I don't know. I would take that start. So would Cash. Every every single game you put Snell out there, you would take that start. And like you said, you know they didn't go to their A guys right away, which is I don't I don't know the reasoning behind that. Um, but uh, it worked out for them. And to your point, I think you're right. I think a lot of the times when there was huge pressure situations building up, uh, like Guriel with bases loaded, first pitch double play ground ball, Tucker back up the middle line drive double play. Like it just kind of went the raise way yesterday. And it went quickly. Uh, but there was some good at bat. Sunino hopping on the first pitch. I don't even think that was a mistake from Framber. You know I love Framber. That was kind of a, a weird thing for me last night, watching that guy pitch. It's so much fun. But kind of like rooting against him. I, there, I have nothing against Framber. He's not part of that 2017 team at all. So like you can root for that guy and it'd be okay. And I was last night. He pitched great. 
Uh, I thought that was just an all-around clean, fun baseball game. They were as Reina Homer. There was some cool stuff that I'm going to be doing on um, sequence about it. Some different plays uh, that Maldonado was trying to get. There was a shake that he probably shouldn't have shook or maybe should have shook. Uh, but, all right, I mean, I thought it was great. It Framber Valdez made a lot of fans last night. He was, you Ooh. know, having good emotions on the mound. Listed at 5'11", 240, which means he's 5'10", 250. He's got an interesting little build to him. I'm getting excited for a 33-year-old chonk Framber Valdez in a few years who's just twirling it across his body. You know what yeah, I really... He dropped s- the passing news. Uh-oh. Passing news. Passing. passing. Rick Renteria fired by the White Sox. Good. Wow. Trevor? I was never a fan. Ploofy? That's tough. That's another manager that got the rebuild but ain't going to get the, the build. Uh, you might happens, bring Kepler in. It happens a lot. But Trev? He a managed- lot of young guys? Sam Fold? Is Danny- Sam Fold's getting a managerial job this offseason. Danny Mendick? He does love me. Um, White Sox fans did not like Renteria. And no. Anyone saw how mismanaged he did the wild card. It wasn't so, good. There's probably more behind the scenes than we know, but. Breaking. Good. Bringing someone fun. Let me, let's bring it back to Framber because I do think this sure. is a guy we can root for. Yeah. I do. I love the body type. A uh, couple things I noticed about Framber yesterday. His hat and his glove are way too small for him. What, mm. What's up with that? That's such a pitcher so, move, I think though. He's very thick. He's like, I don't use this shit. That's anyway. such a pitcher move, and he made that behind the back snag, baby. So you see his gl- his glove is like a second baseman's glove, yeah. And it's like has the kind of the trapeze open I love web, that. like maybe he came up as a second baseman. I love that. <laughs> it was so, I was watching. I was like, why is his glove so little? Old, Framber made a fan of Jake and I. Like, not thick, that we ever thick weren't. lefty second base. Yeah, yeah. You don't see thick enough of them. You don't see enough of them. He probably Ugla. rakes in BP. <laughs> oh, he, Framber hits bombs. Yes. Framber hits bombs. No, he made a fan out of me with his pitching and with how much he talks to himself on the mound. Yeah. How much he smiles. Mm-hmm. And then that behind the bag play was awesome. Yeah. You want to talk about, uh, we talk about cash and we give him credit all the time. About how he manages the bullpen and everything like that. No, um, last night I thought he made a mistake. Mm. You have Aaron Loop coming in to face Brantley. He plunks him right away. You got to face three batters. So he had Aaron Loop up there to face Altu- Was it Altuve? It was and he. Then, he hit Brantley. It's Bregman, no, uh, Bregman Correa, and Correa. Tucker. Sorry, that doesn't seem like what you want when you have Diego loose in the pen. So, like, maybe it was a genius move because it ended up working out, I guess, because Diego got him out of that mess. But to me, that was a mistake, and I, I don't I don't think we're going to be seeing that happen again. Maybe, I guess, it might have to happen over seven games, but uh, I think Cash is going to look back at that one and be like, ah, I probably should have went with somebody different there. His reaction was hilarious. Is so mad. Good camera work by TBS. You think there. he forgot there was a three-batter minimum rule? I think the Rays just Ray, man. I mean, look at, again, like, you know, Curtis Thompson and Loop. You know, you might know Aaron Loop, a guy that's been around the league for a while. I almost, like you were saying, Trev, I mean, he was pumping 95. Maybe the, maybe the gun's yeah. juiced up a little bit, and I think it is. But um, the Rays got these dudes, and the Loop was crazy. I mean, eighth inning, when he does hit Brantley, you now have the game – Essentially, the game-winning runs up in Bregman and Correa, um, you know, two of the he punches Bregs pretty easily, and then he fights back in the Correa bat, but he walks him because he's got first base open after the wild pitch, which then brings up Tucker. Tucker goes first pitch hunt, and now it's bases hucked, one out, and they go to Castillo, first pitch double play ball, um, and just like that, uh, the Rays are out of it, which they. They had a couple. They had a couple perfectly timed double plays, which you know, for how much we love and respect the Rays, you know, you can't draw it up like that. But it worked out for them last night. Yeah, did we lose Trev for a little bit? Yep, sent him a new one. He'll All be right. back. He'll be back. Then, uh, as we wait for Trev, Jake, yeah. in the White Sox announcement tweet that they like they parted ways with Renteria. They say Renteria completed his fourth season as White Sox manager in 2020, leading to the Sox to a 583 record and a tie for second place in the American League Central. 
The White Sox lost their best of three AL postseason wildcard series in a three game to the Oakland Athletics. In his four seasons at the helm, Hunter, it's so weird that they snuck that line in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, it seems like they're like, this is why we fired him. It's so weird to just put that line in there. Who knows? Like Good that job, get out of town. Could easily not be in there and just says he led them to the wild card series in his four seasons at the helm. He guided them to this combined record. Kind of funny. Seems like a little dick punch. Probably is. Yeah. Fired him. That's a pretty big dick punch. Is that our first uh, managerial vacancy of 2021? Uh, no, the Red Sox. So. Red Sox. Oh, uh, Red Sox. Red Sox. And- uh, garden hire like last week of the season. Oh yeah, tired. so we have three, just three jobs at the moment. Roberts in a couple weeks. Renteria was also <laughs> fired as Cubs manager in 2014. And won the World Series in 2016. Oh, ooh, I like that. Oh, so yeah, you have to do that as a good juju play. Uh, Ricky needed to go completely mismanage the bullpen consistently down that rough stretch towards the end of the season. Says patron X E X E edits. I I it was like. You it was you were it'd be hard pressed to find someone in the over the last month that was like giving Renteria kudos. Yeah, White Sox fans, casual analysis, anyone. It just sucks to be the rebuild manager and not the building manager. And you wonder, like, you know, is Hyde? Is this going to happen to Brandon Hyde with the Orioles if they ever flip the script? Mm-hmm. Um, did it? Did it just happen to – well, no, the Tigers aren't there yet. The Royals have Matheny got your now. guy, Matheny, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's – for me, it's Did tough. Did Tingler just do that to Green? Yeah, I guess so in the Padres. Um, you you wonder – again, we don't know all the, all the writing on the wall stuff. Yeah. Um, with a firing like that, it makes you think even if they won the wild card set, they still were going to fire them. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's brutal. They won that first game. And then, like, Luis Robert, you know, you're talking about Renteria's last month of managing. I think Luis Robert was so, so bad for the last month. And it's like, that's probably not on him. But that's the game. Lost Trev for a bit, so if there's an awkward cut there, that's what happened. But, Trev, I wanted to tell you the loop situation um, and Castillo. I, I, I kind of walked into this on the pregame show we did is that I didn't think the Rays wanted to use any of their top three in this game and still win, even if it was close. Um, Anderson threw 32 pitches in game five. Uh, Fairbanks threw 40. So I think those guys were out. Uh they, they were like, let's let's get a win without using these guys. They pushed Snell for the extra inning, and Snell was getting the results. I just didn't think the process was there, and he hasn't been great third time through. And Loop, I think they were trying to get a clean inning out of him there, and then maybe they go to Castillo for the ninth. They didn't have anyone else up, right? I think he was up already. So he threw the least amount of pitches in game five, so I'm guessing that's why Castillo was in the ninth. But when Loop hits him, and you have to go three more batters, because that rule... Uh, then, you know, they had to bring Castillo in in the ninth inning. But that's why I still think this is a great win for the Rays because they didn't employ Anderson. They didn't employ Curtis. They got Glass now and Morton ready to go. Uh, it's a good get-ahead win where the Astros, Frammer's their best pitcher right now. So they lost the ga- game one with their – and he gave them a good performance. Six innings pitch, two earned runs is good performance from, from a rookie in his first ALCS game. And – uh then they went to their bullpen. I like how Dusty did that. I like that he uses Anoli and treats a one-run deficit the same as he would treat treat a one-run um, lead. I like that uh, because it's a little old school these days, but also you, you trust your offense. and You say, hey, if you get us two runs, like uh, we'll, we'll hold them right here with our best guys. But it's a little bit of a punch that they use their best guys, best starter. Um, they didn't use Presley, right? Just Anoli? Just Anoli. But he's their second-best reliever this postseason. Like Tyler and Brooks Riley. So, bit of a punch by the Rays. All the double plays balls are crazy, though. Still, am, cr- am I crazy? I know he literally just got added on to the roster and was hurt most of the year, but Jose Alvarado seems to me like he fits more with the Rays 
plans, but maybe not the right time to bring him in in a one-run game. So I could see that. I just when Luke came in, there's really no offense to Luke. It just that he just doesn't fit that raised bullpen mold. Maybe I have a little bit of resentment. I got designated for assignment by the <laughs> Phillies for Aaron Loop one year oh, trade deadline. Now we're talking. Maybe I hold some resentment. Yes. But to me, like I said, he just doesn't fit that mold. But look, the job got done. Rays win the game. The Astros, I, I don't want to wake them up, but it feels like you win a big series and then you have to come play the Rays. There might be a little bit of a letdown from them here. They got to show me something tonight. They got to show some fight tonight. Yeah. Uh, Kiermaier and Springer both caught on the bases. A little center field action. That's fun. Um, yeah, man, it's it's weird looking back at this box score. I mean, Rays left nine on base. Houston left ten on base. Um, I don't know. Um, Rays get through it. They they have to use Castillo, who goes one point two with seventeen pitches because of the big first pitch double play. It, it's just Rays baseball. You're you're right. Like that feeling of seeing Aaron Loop coming into that situation almost doesn't feel right. Uh, but the Rays find a way, and now they're set up pretty good for today. I mean, they could go Charlie Morton to their two good guys if they want. I think Thompson is going to be a problem this series. Um, we've talked about, uh, you know, seeing guys and seeing pitchers. Thompson throws absolute funk. I think it's the fifth lowest release point in Major League Baseball. So I think Springer, Altuve, Bregman, Correa get used to seeing him. Um, I and he's not just like a sidewinder. Like he he throws ninety three from down there, which normally you know if someone throws from there, it's like ah eighty six with movement. Like no, this dude, this dude hucks it. I think he's gonna be a problem. And yeah, Rays. It felt like it wasn't the Rays A effort. It felt like a B minus effort, and they still got a nice win. It felt like a hangover performance from the Rays, and they still yes. won. But look, you know, I got to say sorry to Luke because you look at his numbers. I mean, he... Nice career. No, I'm just saying this year in particular, too. In 2020 here with 2-5-2, he was in 24 games, 25 innings pitched. I mean, he's he's been doing it. So I guess I could see why, you know, that situation makes sense. But... It does, and if they want to throw their A starters, they're not using Loop there. You're fair to say that. They used him in the... Just a weird time to They didn't him use in. him in the ALCS or ALDS against the Yankees at all. Uh, they kind of bash lefty, so you're not going to throw a lesser lefty out there. They used him once in the divisional series against Toronto. I think they were up big, and he gave up He gave up a hit to his first batter, uh, Joe Panic. Got the next two out, and then they pulled him right after the three min- batter minimum came out. So that might be the story here with Loop. If they are up by four or more, they'll probably throw him against some lefties again and be like, go get us... Three outs, please. And Trev, I mean, it's one one of your things. I mean, it's not like the Rays were making this up. I'm I'm sure coming into this game, they said, "Hey, if we have a nice Brantley spot," um, and I I was trying to say this on the live stream, but I didn't know the best way to do it. But I guess with Aaron Loop being a veteran, like, hey, go get Brantley. You know, try to get Bregman and Correa. Don't lose the game. And then if you get to Kyle Tucker, that's another lefty for you. Uh, he ends up there. He doesn't do a great job. And yeah, I mean. Uh, I wouldn't expect to see Loopy back in this until, you know, probably Ray's game three or four bullpen day. We miss anything? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think we covered it. Quentin, did we miss anything from Houston? It's funny. Fram- it's funny Framber look- got a fan in me. Yeah, it's funny looking back at the box score. I mean, Framber... Let on eight base runners. Snell let on eight base runners, and it just didn't feel that way. It felt like Snell was always fighting, and Framber only had one or two innings where he was really wrestling. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think if you're if you're Houston, this kind of was supposed to be your game. And Curtis Thompson loop. I mean, that's the uh, honestly with the Rays injuries this year, that's like their C squad. I mean, no Chaz Rowe, no Oliver Drake. Like, uh, you know, this Rays team might really get the ball rolling. Any complaints from the umpire, Trev? Manny, Manny back there. You like Manny? I do like Manny. He's a nice guy. Um, I didn't really see anything. I was like, oh wow, Not, nothing came to to mind, which is a good thing. Um, unless he I was a few pitches, but he was consistent. He, he called one high on Altuve, but then he called one high on 
Reddick, and then he and then he didn't call a low pitch for Snell, and then he didn't call it for Framber. And those were they both had big reactions from the batter and the pitcher, and I think they happened on both sides. I didn't see that umpire report, but I thought he had a consistent zone. I thought some of the outside pitches I would have called, and he didn't. And then Snell just kept trying to hammer that inside fastball and could not get it where he wanted it to go. As long as he's as consistent as a player, that's all you want. You know, um, I have one game in particular I always remember in my head. It was against the Rays, David Price pitching against us, and Ted Barrett was behind the plate. And Price kept trying to go in, kept trying to go in. And it was off. But, you know, not by a lot. It was a ball, maybe a ball and a half off inside. But, but Ted would not flinch on it, man. And that's big, bad David Price out there. And if you continuously hit the spot, most of the time an umpire is going to start to open up a little bit. But he I, – I, you could hear him talk. I think, I think Benji Molina was the catcher at the time, who's also – he used to steal so many strikes. You tell him, Benji, Benji, I'm not going to give it to him. That pitch is off. He's got to get more over the plate. And, like, that's what you want. Whether it's – you want it to be in the strike zone, obviously. Like, stay in the strike zone, I get that. But if you're out of the strike zone but you're consistent with it, like, you, a team can live with that as long as it's not egregious. So, yeah, but consistency is the biggest part. I thought Manny did a pretty good job last night. I think the only other thing people are really talking about is Manny Margot just missing a couple home runs from the Talking Baseball Homer drafts. A lot of people were tweeting about that. Manny Margot had the best at bat of the day, and they yeah. just ended up walking him, which was a good call. That one. Did um, anyone take a Rosarine? Did you end up taking him, Jim? You took him. I think you took him. Or I no, wasn't allowed to. You already, you took, already him. took him. Oh, yeah. I took Altuve, so I'm right. on the board. Oh, okay. Dang. Um, yeah, I tried to take him, but I, I had already taken him. On a serious note, uh, the Rays tried to push a button, and it did not work. Hunter Renfro, um, 0 for 4, 4 punchies, swinging over a lot of Framby curveballs. I don't I don't mind that, getting somebody into a game, get him some at bat, so when you do need him to come in and he does have to get in a bat, at least that's not – his first at bat. You know what I mean? Like kind of they've put him right in the middle of the lineup, like kind of wedged him in between some people. Hey, go get some bats, see what you do. He didn't do anything. But now he has that four strikeout sucks, but at least he got in the box and got some some sight right there. You know, mm. he he's you know, what is that called when you get your gun ready? You get benched for the rest of the series, what's that? Yeah, called? maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh who's usually out there? Well they DH to Rosarena. Oh, and he's usually in left. So you can put him out there. Um, I mean, I think, you know, this was a hangover game <laughs> for the Rays. They won it. Brandon Lau, got to get it going. Well, he got the hit. Dust, uh, Framber threw it away, and he has to keep the ball. You think that's gone too mainstream? I think that's gone too it mainstream is, now. It yeah. does, it's like yeah. the silent treatment. Like, it's in, yeah. no more. It's overdone. I'm still fine. They fake the throw treatment. the first person's hit like in the stands. Like that's, that's allowed if it's done by an elderly mm. person in the dugout. It's just it's kind of tired. Like if the guy in the dugout who fake throws the ball into the crowd is sixty plus trainer, um, staff guy, or like old bench coach, still funny. Because when you're so, sixty, when you're sixty plus, you're you're allowed to only make corny jokes. A, a good one to do, and I've seen this done before, is after the game you have the ball. Usually the clubby. We'll write on it like what it is. Like so and so's first hit. Here's the date and the pitcher it's against. Whatever. It's f- seen this happen a couple times, and I think it's funny every time. You have a different ball. It's not the actual one. They write. They spell the guy's name wrong, or they'll like smear it. Like oh shoot. Like when I was writing it, it's smeared, and he, like the guy's like oh man, this is like a keepsake and it's all fucked up. <laughs> but then they give him the real one. Blah it's blah. Pretty blah. Good. At least that one's good. Got to pretend. Kind of, Got to pretend nice for a minute. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Smeared my ball. The smelling the, the spelling the name wrong is really funny because guys are like, come on, man. <laughs> Damn it! All right, I think that's all. Only one game. We got two games coming up. Pre-game show starts soon. Um, you still like the Rays in the series, everyone? Vegas gotta... up them huge after the game. They're minus three seventy-five for the series now. That's yeah, I think big. it was pretty important for the Astros to win the Framber game. And that's why I picked them yesterday, and they didn't do it. Almost, though. It's damn double plays. All right, we'll see you tomorrow recapping games two of the ALCS and game one of the NLCS. Goodbye. Farewell. Thanks for hanging out with us. Got too much shit to do today. <laughs>